The Life of Severus Snape from Harry Potter Professor Severus Snape was an English half-blood wizard serving as potions master, head of Slytherin House, defense against the dark arts professor, and headmaster of the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, as well as being a member of the Order of the Phoenix and a Death Eater. His double life played an extremely important role in both the Wizarding Wars against Voldemort. Welcome to the Amagi! Before we begin, only 25% of our viewers are subscribed, so if you're a fan of the video, please like and double check if you're subscribed. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Early life, 1960 to 1971. Severus Snape was born the 9th of January 1960 to Tobias Snape, an abusive muggle, and Eileen Prince, a neglectful pure-blood witch. He began to identify with his mother's family and created a secret nickname from his mother's maiden name, calling himself the Half-Blood Prince. His unhappy relationship with his father may have been the origin of his disdain for muggles. It's implied that Severus was friendless and uncared for by his parents. This lack of care largely shaped Severus's bitter disposition and cruel behavior later in his life. Severus grew up at Spinner's End, a shabby suburb of Cokeworth. This area of town was near a dirty river and full of dilapidated houses, disused factories, and broken down street lamps. Through the rest of his life, Severus continued to return there when he was not at school. The young Severus is depicted as being unwashed and wearing ill-fitting clothes that were so mismatched it looked deliberate. As a child, Severus was neglected and his parents often fought with one another. He could not wait to leave for Hogwarts at the end of each summer. Despite this, one of his favorite foods from his childhood was holiday blancmange, which persisted into his adult years. Lily Evans and her family lived in the same town, close to Spinner's End. After watching her for some time, Severus noticed her evident magical abilities and began making friendly overtures. The two bonded quickly and it appears that he was very interested in Lily right from the beginning, though she only regarded him as a good friend. During this time, he also developed a contempt towards her older sister, Petunia. This was most likely because she made disparaging comments about his clothes and residence, but also maybe because she was a muggle. Information from Severus's own memories of his first interactions with Lily and Petunia suggests that he was an awkward child with poor social skills. Even when it was important for him to make a good impression, he always seemed to have trouble doing so. Hogwarts Years, 1971 to 1978. Severus attended Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry as a student from 1971 to 1978 and was sorted into Slytherin House, at that time led by potions master Horace Slughorn. On the way to Hogwarts for his first year, Severus sat with Lily Evans on the train. While on the train, they met James Potter and Sirius Black. This encounter between the three of them revolved around a disagreement regarding what Hogwarts house was the best. This hostile first encounter would set the tone for the antagonism between the three of them for the rest of his life. Sorted into Slytherin house upon their arrival at the school, classmates would later state that Severus excelled in the dark arts from an early age. At the age of 11, he knew more curses and hexes than most of the seventh year students, according to Sirius Black. He was also credited with creating a good number of popular spells like Levi Corpus, Libera Corpus, Muffler and courses like Langlock and Toenail Growth Hex, and his signature curse that he invented himself, Sectum Sempra. He reportedly was friends with a gang of Slytherins who later became Death Eaters, including Avery, Mulsaber, Bellatrix Black, Rodolphus Lestrange, Evan Rosier, and Wilkes. Severus also had contact with Lucius Malfoy, who was a prefect during his first year, and greeted him kindly when he was sorted into Slytherin House. Most likely, the two had good rapport at Hogwarts, which could also be a reason why Narcissa Malfoy trusted Severus to take care of Draco Malfoy and why he seemed to favor Draco during his later teaching years, even when Draco refused it in the task to kill Dumbledore. Remus Lupin and Peter Pettigrew were also classmates of Severus. Around the same time, he was also acquainted with another notorious troublemaker, a fifth-year student by the name of Patricia Rakepick. James and his group of friends were constantly at war with Severus throughout their school years. Severus's memories, recorded in the pencil, 
impulsive suggests that he was an introverted and studious individual, whereas James was arrogant, popular, and athletic. Immediately upon meeting him, James disliked Severus for expressing a desire to be in Slytherin. James' crush on Lily and Severus's close friendship and unrequited love for her also heightened the tension between the two. One recorded memory in the pensive bore witness to James bullying him, turning him upside down to reveal his underwear in front of many students, including Lily. This action proved to be very offensive, and it increased the hatred between the two adolescents. In this incident, Lily came to Severus's defense, but this only made things worse. In a subsequent lashing out at James, in an attempt to recover his lost dignity, Severus inadvertently called Lily a mudblood. Lily refused to forgive him for it, even after his repeated apologies. This would forever be Severus's worst memory. Severus noticed that Remus kept disappearing during the full moon, and once followed him past the Whomping Willow, after being tipped off on how to do so by Sirius Black, to confirm his suspicions. This act could have cost Severus his life, had it not been for James going after him to stop him when he learned of Sirius's prank. Had he gone on his own, he might have been caught off guard by a fully-fledged werewolf. As it was, however, James did reach Severus in time and managed to save him just before he got to the Shrieking Shack, while Remus was in his wolf form. Albus Dumbledore swore Severus to secrecy, but the true nature of Remus was clear to Severus. By their seventh year, James had grown out of his immaturity and arrogance to the point that Lily started to date him, even though he never grew out of his hatred for Severus. According to Sirius, Severus had always been a special case with James. Though it should be noted Snape's continued friendships with students who were trying to become Death Eaters did not help his relationship with the Marauders or Lily. Lily ended up marrying James, which only strengthened Severus's bitterness towards him. Half-Blood Prince Severus was a talented wizard even in his childhood. It was apparent through the notes and scribbles in his potions textbook that he had made time during classes to invent curses, charms, and clever potion innovations, while simultaneously learning the required textbook lessons. Severus's potions textbook contained a few spells and curses which he was credited with inventing. Levicorpus, which grabbed the victim by the ankle and dangled him slash her upside down, and Sectum Sempra, which caused slashing bloody cuts, guided by the wand gestures of the caster, like a blade or sword, which bled extensively. Levicorpus somehow escaped from Severus's secrecy and became very popular around Hogwarts toward the end of his fifth year at school. Severus's book later fell into the hands of Harry Potter in September 1996. Harry used the Half-Blood Prince's tips and earned praise with that year's potions master, Professor Slughorn. Harry considered the Half-Blood Prince to be a better teacher than Severus, unaware at that point that Severus was the prince, much to Harry's later displeasure. The potions textbook has an inscription indicating it is property of the Half-Blood Prince. Hermione Granger's research revealed that Prince was the maiden name of Severus's mother, and so the nickname was revealed to be a combination of his mother's maiden name and his blood status. Harry Potter also pointed out all the similarities between Snape's nickname and the name Voldemort gave himself. This nickname was apparently a secret, as Remus did not remember it ever being used publicly by Severus. First Wizarding War, 19 1978 to 1981. Severus Snape eventually joined the ranks of Lord Voldemort's Death Eaters. His actions as a Death Eater are largely unknown, though he quickly became an important Death Eater in Voldemort's inner circle. He was the spy responsible for informing Voldemort about the prophecy foretelling his downfall. In early 1980, Snape eavesdropped on an interview for divination professor Sybil Trelawney and Albus Dumbledore at the Hog's Head Inn. In the course of the interview, Trelawney prophesied that at the end of July, a child would be born who would cause the destruction of Lord Voldemort, which prompted Dumbledore to hire her, partly for her own safety. At that time, it was not clear who was meant by the prophecy. Two children of prominent wizarding families were born that year at the end of July, Harry Potter and Neville Longbottom. Albus reported at the Wizengamot trial of Igor Karkarov that Severus had come to him and explained that he had been the one to overhear the prophecy and reported it to Voldemort. However, Snape did not hear the entire prophecy as the Hogshead Barman and Albus's brother, Aberforth, caught him eavesdropping and threw him out. Severus suffered terrible remorse when Voldemort decided that Harry Potter was the subject of the prophecy, and that Lily Evans, the woman whom he'd always loved, was now in danger as the result of his actions. He begged Voldemort to spare her, who agreed. However, knowing that he could not leave Lily's safety in the hands of someone who could turn back on his word on a mere whim, and that Lily would probably defend herself to the last breath, Snape also approached Albus Dumbledore. Dumbledore to ask him to save Lily. Snape pleaded with Dumbledore to hide her, along with her husband and son if he had to. Dumbledore
Dumbledore agreed, but insisted that Severus serve him as a spy among the Death Eaters. In fact, it was Snape's request to Voldemort which allowed Lily to let herself die in order for Harry to live when Voldemort attempted to murder him, therefore ensuring that his curse backfired and Voldemort's body was destroyed in the process. Despite Dumbledore's best efforts to protect the Potters, Voldemort was tipped off by Peter Pettigrew, one of James's best friends, a spy, and found them anyway. After Lily's death, Snape was devastated and distraught to the point of wishing himself dead, but Dumbledore urged him to ensure Harry's safety out of respect for Lily's memory. Snape initially insisted the danger had been averted with the Dark Lord gone, only for Albus to insist that he would return, and everyone, particularly the boy, would be in danger when that happened. So Snape spent the rest of his life protecting her child, Harry Potter, who was often said to strongly resemble James. Distrusted for his past as a Death Eater by those on Albus Dumbledore's side, and hated by other Death Eaters for living as Dumbledore's stooge for 10 years, Snape continued living on to complete Dumbledore's plan and protect Harry and defeat Voldemort. Career at Hogwarts, 1981-1995 When Severus Snape began his teaching career at Hogwarts in 1981, taking up a teaching post around the same time as the threat posed by the rampaging curses that had terrorized the castle's residents were contained, and the subsequent expulsion of his former peer, Jacob, for rules he had broken in his quest for the cursed vault and the fellow students who had been endangered in the process. He initially applied for the position of defense against the dark arts teacher, but was rejected multiple times. Many students were under the impression that this was because Dumbledore feared Snape might return to his old ways if allowed to teach his favorite subject. But in reality, it was because Dumbledore was aware by that point that the job had been jinxed by Voldemort. Knowing that no defense against the dark arts teacher would last longer than a year, Dumbledore instead employed Snape in the position of potions master and head of Slytherin House, allowing the retirement of veteran potions master professor Horace Slughorn. Though it seemed rather uncommon for someone as young as Snape to be named a head of house at Hogwarts, it is possible that Snape was the only Slytherin teacher left at the school, or that he was placed there to keep a watchful eye on the young Slytherins, who were frequently accused, not without reason, of joining the Death Eaters. Following Voldemort's fall, Snape never attempted to find his old master, having switched sides ever since the Dark Lord had targeted Lily, and this allowed him to avoid time in Azkaban as Dumbledore staunchly defended him. He fabricated the fact that he believed Voldemort to be dead as an alibi for still loyal Death Eaters, but in truth, he and Dumbledore had discussed Voldemort and knew he would inevitably return. Henceforth, the most important reason why he applied as teacher, to ensure from the shadows the safety of Harry Potter, who Lily had died protecting. This would bring him into conflict with fanatical Death Eaters like Bellatrix Lestrange later in life, but Snape was almost immediately forgiven by the reborn Voldemort because he could provide him with 13 years of information on Dumbledore and the Order of the Phoenix. In the meantime, and with Voldemort vanished, he focused on his teaching duties at Hogwarts. As a professor, Snape was a stickler for discipline, with little patience for foolishness, yet extremely effective in his job and well respected by the other professors. His deep understanding of potion brewing, as showed by his expert concoction of Wolfsbane potion, transformed the knowledge of potions from mere chemistry to an art. He would accept students into his newt classes only if they had achieved an outstanding mark at their owl examination. He felt that anyone with a lower mark than that would lack the passion and devotion to the complex and demanding subjects that would follow in the last two years of school. Though strict, Snape had an obvious bias for Slytherins, giving them undeserved rights over the others, while looking down on the other students somewhat unfairly. His interpersonal relations with students outside of his own house were subpar at best. He would, on numerous occasions, bully students without any repercussions. Though one might dispute if his disdain for Neville Longbottom was more about bullying or about the fact that Voldemort had chosen to target the Potters over the Longbottoms, and if he'd picked the Longbottoms instead, Lily Potter would perhaps still be alive. He once threatened to poison Neville's pet toad, Trevor, and he told Neville how stupid he was. Once he even told Hermione Granger that her enlarged teeth were the same size as usual, neither of which were necessary behaviors. Snape's role during this time was extremely sensitive and required masterful espionage and image control skills. As he and Dumbledore anticipated that Voldemort would return eventually, and many of Snape's actions would be reported on by Death Eater's spies or gained through torture and legilimency, even if Snape's true mentality and intentions were inaccessible to the Dark Lord, he had to consider every decision and relationship carefully. He treated Harry Potter with maximum coldness and never missed an opportunity to cause him trouble, as any variation from this would have cast suspicion on him in Voldemort's eyes. But in reality, he protected Harry on numerous occasions. But he was happy enough to cause the boy humiliation 
radiation and trouble, but never any actual harm or danger as he was still Lily's son despite his father. He also had to avoid becoming too aware of Voldemort's plans so as to avoid being held responsible for allowing Harry and his friends to foil them. His actions during this period created no mistrust on the part of Voldemort, which allowed for Voldemort's ultimate downfall. 1984 to 1985 school year. Closing in on the first half of a decade of his tenure as an instructor at Hogwarts, Professor Snape was present at the start of term feast of the 84-85 school year, during which he was introduced to the new first years as the head of Slytherin House during the sorting ceremony. He witnessed the sorting of, among others, the younger sibling of Jacob, who was sorted into the same house as Jacob and of whom he became immediately suspicious. During the very first day of teaching the first years, he instructed the newcomers in the correct way in which to brew a cure for boils, during which he made no attempt at hiding his dislike for Jacob's family, and openly favored Marula Snide, a student in his own house and whose parents had been among his own comrades during his time as a Death Eater, presumably both due to his bias toward his own house, as well as part of maintaining his cover as a future double agent. Throughout the year, he proceeded to teach the class, among other things, the Wiganweld Potion, the Herbicide Potion, and the Sleeping Draft. Throughout the term, Professor Snape found himself reluctantly acknowledging the said student's talent. At that time, there was unfinished business between Jacob's sibling and Marula Snide, since Marula tried to attack Rowan Kana, Ben Cooper, and Jacob's sibling. So both of them were trying to be prepared for the inescapable duel, as Jacob's sibling prefect had told them they needed to learn an offensive spell, an advantage charm, and a healing potion or charm. Both of them were looking forward to the Wiganweld potion and Snape's class. Marula asked Snape to teach the class the potion, though coincidentally Snape had already planned to teach it, as Rowan had notified Jacob's sibling earlier. When the class brewed their potions, Snape admired Jacob's sibling's potion's skills, although he admired Marula's more. Sometime later, Snape and the school's charms master, Phileas Flitwick, were made aware of how there was to be an unsanctioned duel between Jacob's sibling and Marula Snide in the clock tower courtyard, arriving just in time to see the latter successfully deprive their opponents of her wand. Although Professor Phileas Flitwick wanted to know who was it that cast the first spell, keeping in mind that Jacob's sibling had been instructed to only ever use the disarming charm defensively, Snape was largely dismissive of who started the fight. After subtly criticizing his colleague, whom he correctly deduced was the one who had instructed said student in how to use the disarming charm in the first place, he ordered both students to get cleaned up and to meet at the West Tower in order to receive punishment for their transgression. Upon reporting the incident to Albus Dumbledore, Snape asked for Jacob's sibling to be expelled, whom he regarded as a troublemaker just like their brother before them, a request the headmaster rejected, and which he would soon thereafter lament about in the presence of both Jacob's sibling and Snide. Although he docked 20 points from the former's house, he was interrupted by the caretaker of the day, Argus Filch, before he could do anything else. Upon being informed about an incident that had occurred that demanded his immediate attention and was related to the cursed vaults, Snape ordered both students to return to their common rooms. Accompanying the caretaker to a corridor on the fifth floor, Mr. Filch explained that he and his pet cat, Mrs. Norris, had discovered how cursed ice had appeared in one of the rooms there. Immediately recognizing this as one of the curses unleashed when someone had tampered with the cursed vaults, Snape immediately ordered Filch to lock the door and stand guard to prevent students from getting inside before he left to inform the headmaster. In the aftermath of his discovery, the faculty successfully managed to keep it from spreading any further and securely sealed up the room afterwards. Although he was unaware, the two students he had just left had followed them and overheard portions of his conversation with Filch and resolved to break into the room in order to look for clues regarding the whereabouts of the vaults. During the herbicide potion lesson, Marula made a mistake and Jacob's sibling helped her fix it. Unbelievably, when Snape understood it, he awarded Jacob's sibling with 10 points. Throughout the rest of the year, he presumably continued to keep a sharp eye on the students, especially Jacob's sibling, and did everything he could to keep the discovery from the student body, in which he was ultimately unsuccessful. Also, he wanted to harvest fairy wings for his potion ingredients. Rubus Hagrid asked Jacob's sibling to move the fairies to another place, so it happens to be a quest for them to save the fairies' wings. Jacob's sibling set out to move the fairies, though a fairy had gone to the potion's classroom. Penny Haywood went to the classroom in order to help Jacob's sibling and the fairy as well. They thought of Jacob's sibling distracting Snape while Penny tried to make the fairy cooperate, while Snape believed she was looking for her favorite quill that her mother had given her. It's possible that Jacob's sibling distracted him with asking about bottling fame, or his hair, or about his well-being. At the Halloween feast, Jacob's sibling needed some aconite for the Wolfsbane potion in order to help the werewolf Kiara Labosca. Rowan Kana distracted Snape to allow Jacob's sibling to steal 
from his store of ingredients. 1985 to 1986 school year. Around the beginning of the year, Snape assisted Professor McGonagall with using the fire-making spell to free Ben Copper from the cursed ice. At some other point early in the year, Snape became livid when a first year mentioned Harry Potter in class and hurled a jar of pickled animal parts at him. During the teacher appreciation celebration that year, Snape was interviewed by Penny Haywood. After these events, Snape searched Jacob's siblings' dormitory and found some potion ingredients that were useful against the cursed vaults. So he asked them in the classroom to explain it in order to defend themselves, though it was revealed that the evidence was a plot carried out by Marula. 1986 to 1987 school year. Snape continued his job as potions master at Hogwarts and tried to prevent students' interference in the cursed vaults. He ordered Argus Filch to retrieve Jacob's note, which was an untransfigured black quill from Jacob's sibling. Jacob's sibling stole back the quill with the help of Tulip Karasu, becoming one step closer to the third cursed vault. Tulip also helped helped them find their brother's corridor at Hogwarts, although it was protected with a two-lock padlock and an anti-Alohomora charm. Since Tulip had the key to one of the locks, and one was in the possession of her former friend, Marula Snide, they took the key from her after letting off a dung bomb. When they opened the door, Jacob's sibling confronted a Boggart in the form of Lord Voldemort. In time, Severus Snape found them and warned Jacob's sibling that they had to let go of the cursed vaults unless they wanted to share Jacob's fate. Expulsion. During Jacob's sibling's career advice to William Weasley, they took him to Professor Snape's classroom in order to seek advice about potioneering. Professor Snape asked them to brew an original potion so he'd be able to make his decision according to their performance. It's unknown what Jacob's sibling chose to brew, though it was either a contortion potion, a screaming potion, or a stamina potion. After the potion was brewed, at least one of them drank it on Snape's order, as drinking the potion is the only way to measure your success, according to Snape. The poorly brewed potion made the drinker sick, thus Snape questioned Bill's potioneering skills. 1987 to 1988 school year. This year began with an old, untrustworthy enemy of Severus, and also an old classmate of his, Patricia Rakepick, a curse breaker from Gringotts Wizarding Bank, arriving at Hogwarts, invited by Albus Dumbledore. Jacob's sibling began to suspect Madame Rakepick before they accosted Snape in one of the potion study sessions and asked him about the new curse breaker. After the session, he told them about Rakepick and the fact that she couldn't be trusted and how dangerous she was. Although he called it unwise to question Dumbledore's judgment without substantial evidence, as the headmaster trusted Rakepick. A little while later, when Jacob's sibling was planning to fly to the next cursed vault in the Forbidden Forest, Professor Snape broke Jacob's sibling's borrowed broomstick and sought an unexpected help from Jacob's sibling with revealing Rakepick's true intention. In addition to Snape's unexpected request, he revealed an unexpected fact, telling them that Rakepick had been monitoring and spying on Jacob's sibling ever since she arrived. Thus, he asked them to spy on her. Jacob's siblings spied on her many times while taking orders from Snape, although Snape admitted that them spying on her was totally useless, since she said whatever she wanted Severus to know and also she knew that they were spying. Nevertheless, he warned them not to tell any of this to anyone. He also gave Jacob's sibling a garroting gas that would later save their and Marula's life from Rakepick's Cruciatus curse in the Buried Vault. At the end of the year, Madame Rakepick won the defense against the Dark Arts Professor title against Snape. 1988 to 1989 school year. This year began while Snape's hatred of Rakepick was more intense than ever. During Jacob's sibling's search for the fifth cursed vault and the Marauder's map, he faced Peeves multiple times. One of these times, they were searching for a friend of Jacob's, Duncan Ash. Peeves mentioned that he, Duncan Ash, hated two things, potions and Jacob, though he loathed Jacob more than potions, so Jacob's sibling went to Snape in order to gather information about Ash. Snape revealed to him that he never liked the Marauders and somehow disappointed them. In addition to their searches, Penny Haywood, one of the victim's sisters, was so concerned about the cursed vaults that she would not do what she was gifted in, potioneering. Therefore, Severus, who thought she would have a good career in potioneering, despite what happened to her sister Beatrice, changed and somehow he was disappointed. A fair warning from him to Jacob's sibling would make them think about Miss Haywood, and this would help Haywood and Jacob's sibling control themselves and try to find a way to break the last curse and free both Jacob and Beatrice. Though on Dumbledore's order, he was willing to help Jacob's sibling with mastering legitimacy and Occlumency. Thus, Jacob's sibling was taught by Severus Snape, a decent Legilimens and Occlumens. Severus Snape asked them to defend themselves against him, casting Legilimens on Jacob's sibling, and he also revealed some of their secrets. And he believed that Jacob's sibling had not even tried to not let Severus get into his thoughts, and thought it settled the fact that Jacob gave them visions from a far distance. He also demanded that they cast the spell on him, and this proved to Jacob's sibling the power of Occlumency. Later, when inventing the Star Shower spell, 
spell, Jacob's sibling went to Marula and Professor Snape. While Professor Flitwick approved of the spell, it was later revealed that this was not the Star Shower charm, but the Star Shimmering charm. Professor Snape perceived the issue and helped Jacob's sibling fix this. Snape was also seen with Poppy Pomfrey and Albus Dumbledore while coming to see what has happened to Marula Snide after Rakepick's betrayal in the Buried Vault. Madame Rakepick was seen while using Lacarnum Inflammari on Snape's cloak. During Jacob's sibling's mental examination on Scabbers for his odd behavior, Percy Weasley, Charles Weasley, and Jacob's sibling met each other multiple times at the Great Hall. Because they had Scabbers, Snape warned them that a rat must not be in the Great Hall. The second time, when Jacob's sibling's rat was also present, and while there was a fight between Charles and Percy, Snape asked them kindly to discuss their nothing somewhere else without disturbing anyone. Though because of his perfect sense of smell, he smelled some rats, though both escaped. When Snape left, the students searched for Scabbers and Jacob's sibling's rat, and after they found them, they continued their research. Their research ended up with Sylvanus Kettleburn suggesting borrowing rat tonic from Professor Snape in order to calm the rat from the anxiety he had because of an unknown source of fear. After convincing Snape, he helped Charles and Jacob's sibling with instructions and ingredients, and they brewed the potion. Percy arrived with Scabbers, and with the presence of Snape, Jacob's sibling finally understood what the rat feared was the professor, unbeknownst to them, his lifelong enemy. 1989 to 1990 school year. This school year began with Snape's old enemy, Madame Rakepick, being fired after her betrayal. This year at Hogwarts was also as dangerous as other years, or perhaps more so. After the start of the year, Beatrice Haywood found a petrified student because of the statue curse. Thus, she notified the potions master, Severus Snape, and they notified Jacob's sibling. Their examination result was that the petrified student had some texture, the same as the merpeople trident that he found in the buried vault. Also, Professor Snape was seen while he was talking about the statue curse with Headmaster Dumbledore. Madame Rakepick used to store so many dark and cursed items in her classroom, and after her betrayal and expulsion, Argus Filch collected her items and Severus Snape took them from the caretaker in order to break their curses. While Jacob's sibling was searching for the items, they and Marula Snide found Professor Snape while brewing Veritaserum, and he told them that he was unable to break the curses. Therefore, he gave them to the only one who could break the curses, Headmaster Dumbledore. Severus Snape, who had been ordered to retrieve Jacob's sibling when Madame Poppy Pomfrey was petrified with the statue curse, and unfortunately it meant that there was no one to take care of the petrified students or the students that had any kind of illness. So after an announcement taken by the headmaster, students had to visit Snape or Sprout if they had any kind of symptom or illness. He most likely taught the students the cough potion after her petrification because of Dumbledore's announcement. Snape was introduced to the Brazilian exchange student Alonza Alves by Jacob's sibling in his classroom that school year, whom would be joining his sixth year potions class. Snape was in the midst of a conversation in his classroom with Argus Filch and Madame Pince when he was informed that Ashwinder eggs and Occamy eggshells had gone missing from his stores, which Beatrice Haywood had stolen to brew Felix Felicious with. Snape was also rather displeased to be informed by Alonza that her potions had a tendency to explode. 1990-1991 school year. During this year, Jacob's sibling asked Snape for some flu powder, which they needed to enter the British Ministry of Magic via the Flu Network for their work experience program. Snape was, at the time, engaged in a one-sided conversation with Arif Sikander in his classroom, the Muggle Studies professor who was talking to him about Muggle chemistry, which Snape had no time for. Snape gave them the powder and told them and Sikander to leave, rudely telling them that he couldn't stand either of them. Snape also taught seventh years how to brew the Wolfsbane potion for the Department of the Regulation and Control of Magical Creatures when no alternative presented itself as part of their work experience task of helping the Ministry locate a fugitive werewolf. Snape examined the hair care potion Zeep's Luscious Locks solution when it came clear its users were suffering from memory loss for Jacob's sibling and Penny Haywood on their Ministry business. He discovered the potion contained potent memory loss powers and that it contained the forgetfulness potion as its base with lavender and valerian as its ingredients. He also agreed to help them develop a counter serum for it once he had determined all of its ingredients. He later helped Penny and Jacob's sibling complete their counter serum. Snape also analyzed a pitcher that contained pumpkin juice for Jacob's sibling to see if it contained remnants of the Alihansi draft, which could explain the laughing curse affecting St. Mungo's. But Snape found no traces of the potion, much to their displeasure. 
1991-1992 school year. In 1991, Nicholas Flamel, a famous alchemist and friend of Albus Dumbledore, had the Philosopher's Stone that was keeping him alive moved from his safe in Gringotts to Hogwarts for safekeeping. Snape contributed to the defenses set up around the magical artifact by adding a potions riddle as one of the obstacles, and the only obstacle that used logic as a key factor instead of magic. At the same time, Harry Potter became a student in Snape's classes, and the two of them detested each other almost immediately. Harry's resemblance to his father and his acquired celebrity status brought the worst out of Snape from their very first potions lesson. Although Snape had pledged an oath to Dumbledore that he would protect Harry, such an oath did not stand in the way of Snape's bias to Slytherin House, nor did it mean Harry was going to get any special treatment in academics. In fact, he ended up giving Harry the exact opposite. Throughout the year, as part of his promise to Dumbledore, Snape did everything he could to prevent defense against the Dark Arts Professor Quirinus Quirrell from helping Lord Voldemort obtain the Philosopher's Stone, having seen him as what he was and at least knew he was helping Voldemort, if not also being aware of Voldemort possessing the Professor. By Halloween, the turbaned Professor, sure enough, made his first move by letting a mountain troll into Hogwarts Castle as a diversion. Snape took his chance to stop him from sneaking into the restricted third floor corridor where the stone was being hidden in the midst of the chaotic event, only to get bitten in the leg by the corridor's three-headed guard dog, Fluffy. When Quirrell made his first attempt on Harry's life by jinxing his new broomstick during the boys' first Quidditch game, Snape intervened again by performing a counter curse to prevent Harry from being hurled off. Unfortunately, Hermione Granger observed the crowd through binoculars to figure out who was performing the jinx and caught Snape discreetly uttering the counter curse incantation, but erroneously thought he was performing the actual curse. So she ran to his stand and set fire to his robes in order to distract him and make him stop, and luckily for Snape, she accidentally knocked Quirrell over during her hurry back to the Gryffindor stands, causing him to break the eye contact necessary for performing his spell correctly. For the next match, Snape insisted on refereeing to make sure it did not happen again. This did not come across well to the other teachers, who just believed that he was trying to injure the Gryffindor Quidditch team's chances of winning. Snape intensely confronted Quirrell in the Forbidden Forest on the night after the match, demanding to know why he was after the Philosopher's Stone. Unbeknownst to them both, Harry was watching the entire argument from the treetops, but because the boys suspected Snape of plotting to steal the stone and of attempting to kill him, it seemed to him that the potions professor was trying to intimidate Quirrell into handing over information regarding the artifact. Harry, Ron, and Hermione unjustly tried to be supportive and encouraging to Quirrell whenever possible by telling people off for laughing at his stutter, smiling at him encouragingly whenever they passed by him, or arguing with Snape. Snape was present at the end of term feast that year. He was actually very pleased to see that Slytherin had won the House Cup again, but was forced to shake McGonagall's hand with a forced smile after Dumbledore's additional house points to Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Neville meant that Gryffindor won instead. 1992-1993 school year During the beginning of the school year in 1992, Snape learned from the Evening Prophet that Muggles spotted Harry and Ron traveling to Hogwarts in the flying Ford Anglia, instead of on the Hogwarts Express. Knowing the severity of their deeds could very well cause them to be expelled, which would put Harry in great danger as he would lose Dumbledore's protection, Snape took matters into his own hands and confronted them when they landed, where he severely berated them for their breach of one of the most sacred laws of their world, and pretended to call upon Professors Dumbledore and Minerva McGonagall to make them solve this situation. It was as Snape wanted. Dumbledore ensured that they would not be expelled, and Minerva punished them instead by giving them a warning and separate detentions. Regardless of his desire to uphold Lily's memory, Snape considered the punishment too lenient and retaliated by allowing the Slytherin Quidditch team to unfairly usurp the Hogwarts Quidditch pitch during the Gryffindor team's practice time. This was in order for them to train Draco Malfoy as their new seeker. Later on in the year, Harry, Ron, and Hermione successfully managed to smuggle Polyjuice potion ingredients from Snape's personal cabinets. During this year, Professor Snape also worked with the new Defense Against the Dark Arts professor, Gilderoy Lockhart, in running the Dueling Club. In this period, he quickly visibly showed a large amount of irritation and anger at Professor Lockhart, who would remain evermore the teacher of the subject he most cherished. Snape took a certain amount of enjoyment in blasting him against a wall with the disarming charm and looking ready to murder him on the spot to the point that even Lockhart was intimidated enough to stop annoying Snape. He ensured that Harry would be engaged with Draco instead, but interfered when Harry and Draco practically checkmated each other, with Harry using the tickling charm on Malfoy and was subsequently hit by the dancing feet spell. Although he gave Malfoy the instruction needed to conjure a snake and relished the fact that Harry was alone to face the large angry serpent, once Harry showed his parcel tongue ability, Snape quickly interfered to avoid too much of a problem on Harry's part 
by vanishing the snake and allowing him to be escorted out of the Great Hall by his friends, but looked at him suspiciously before he left. Lockhart would only further irritate Professor Snape during Valentine's Day, where he had a party to celebrate it as Snape looked on particularly dreadfully, to the point that he looked as if he had been forced to take multiple Skelligros, and Snape did not hesitate to look utterly infuriated when Lockhart cheerfully asked the students to make Snape brew for them love potions, to the point where he clearly shot a warning look to them that he would force feed anyone who dared to ask him to poison. His hatred for Lockhart finally reached its apex when Lockhart walked in upon the discovery of Ginny being taken to the Chamber of Secrets, as even Snape was genuinely concerned for her regardless of how he treated Gryffindor, and furiously led the teachers into forcing him out of the way so that the students could be escorted to safety. Snape was also responsible for the brewing of the Mandrake Restorative Draft in order to cure all those petrified by the Serpent of Slytherin that terrorized the school that year. By describing the Polyjuice Potion and Potions class, which Hermione remembered, and demonstrating the disarming charm to the dueling club, Snape taught Harry two skills that ultimately proved critical to his success. 1993-1994 school year. During this school year, Snape demonstrated his expertise with potions by brewing the complex Wolfsbane potion for the new defense against the dark arts professor, Remus Lupin. Throughout this year, Snape suspected that Lupin may be helping Sirius Black, an escapee from Azkaban, enter Hogwarts Castle. This suspicion stemmed from Lupin's friendship with Sirius and Harry's father, James Potter, when they were all at Hogwarts as students. Near the end of the school year, Snape ambushed Black as he entered the school again and attempted to apprehend him. Believing him to have been the one who betrayed Lily to Voldemort, he attempted to arrange to send Sirius and Remus to Azkaban. However, before he could give Sirius and Remus to the Dementors, Harry, Ron, and Hermione simultaneously used Expelliarmus on Snape. Snape also said that Harry, Ron, and Hermione faced suspension for being out of bounds. Since Harry aided in Black's escape, Snape was beside himself with indignation. On the last day of school, he revealed to his students that Lupin was a werewolf, forcing Lupin to resign his post. 1994 to 1995 school year. Snape was apoplectic when Harry's name was unexpectedly chosen from the Goblet of Fire. Despite the fishy circumstances surrounding the incident and the immense dangers that Harry was facing, Snape refused to believe that he did not deliberately enter himself into the Triwizard Tournament. Indeed, he continued to treat Harry as maliciously as ever, thinking that he had broken into his office to steal ingredients that would aid him in the underwater phase of the tournament. Harry later discovered that Snape was once a Death Eater, but had been vouched for by Dumbledore. Dumbledore told the Wisengamot that although Snape had indeed worked for Voldemort, he changed sides and turned spy against them. Dumbledore reassured Harry that Snape's loyalties were genuine, though he refused to tell Harry why. Harry was not the only one who had expressed skepticism over Snape's reform. Professor Moody had Snape's office searched at the beginning of the year, claiming that it was an Auror's privilege, and that Dumbledore mentioned being watchful of him. Snape was resentful of Moody's accusations, but could not do anything about it. In truth, Moody was actually an imposter who had been raiding Snape's cabinet for ingredients to make Polyjuice Potion. Despite Snape's unawareness of the real reason why Harry was in the tournament, it had not escaped his notice that Lord Voldemort's mark was becoming increasingly more pronounced throughout the year. Karkaroff, who dreaded retribution from Voldemort, panicked and confided his fears in Snape. Karkaroff attempted to talk to him numerous times throughout the year, but Snape had no sympathy for him and offered no help. Karkaroff consequently fled when the Dark Lord returned, but Snape, who remained in the Dark Lord's good favor with the information he could provide on Dumbledore, had nothing to fear in terms of retribution. In fact, he appeared to have been waiting for Voldemort's return more than ever this year, as he and Dumbledore were conversing about it. After the third task and the rebirth of Lord Voldemort, Barty Crouch Jr. took Harry to Moody's office. Crouch Jr. started to question Harry about what had happened, but was shortly rescued by Professors Dumbledore, McGonagall, and Snape. Soon, the effects of Crouch Jr.'s Polyjuice Potion wore off. In the excitement, he had neglected to take it at the proper time to maintain his cover. Under the effects of the Veritas Serum provided by Professor Snape, Crouch described Lord Voldemort's plan to resurrect himself and Crouch Jr.'s own involvement in getting Harry to the graveyard. Dumbledore and Snape attempted to convince a disbelieving Cornelius Fudge that Voldemort had returned. He was then sent on a secret mission by Dumbledore to rejoin the Death Eaters and spy on the Dark Lord as a double agent. 1995-1996 school year. During the 95-96 school year, with Voldemort having returned to his body, Snape carried on with his work as a double agent for Dumbledore. When Harry began having visions about Lord Voldemort, Dumbledore asked Snape to teach Harry occlumency in order to shut down the telepathic connection. However, mutual hostility made it difficult for them to work productively during the sessions. Indeed, Snape had to be very careful in the ways that he helped Harry. 
Should Voldemort read Harry's mind and discover his servant working against him? At one point, Harry peeked into the pensive when Snape was out from his office and witnessed a private memory of Snape being viciously bullied and harassed by Harry's father. Upon returning, Snape grabbed him roughly by the arm and threw him out of the office and forbade him from ever coming back. For the rest of that semester, he treated Harry with redoubled contempt and fury, and ignored him in class whenever possible. Towards the end of the school year, Dolores Umbridge captured Harry and questioned him on the whereabouts of Dumbledore. She sent for Snape to provide Veritaserum to force Harry to reveal any information he may be hiding. Snape claimed that his supplies of Veritaserum were exhausted earlier. Upon hearing Harry's cryptic warning about Sirius's capture, he swiftly carried the message back to the Order members, and helped come up with a plan for them to come to the rescue in the Department of Mysteries. However, despite the fact that Snape came to his aid multiple times throughout the year, Harry hated him just as much as ever, due to believing that Snape's goading spurred Sirius into joining the battle. 1996 to 1997 school year. In July of 96, Dumbledore had been afflicted by a powerful curse cast on Marvel O'Gaunt's ring, one of Voldemort's horcruxes, prior to the start of Harry's sixth year at Hogwarts. Although Snape's knowledge of the dark arts enabled him to slow the spread of the curse, the curse would have ultimately killed Dumbledore within a year. Dumbledore, aware that Voldemort had ordered Draco to kill him, asked Snape to kill him instead as a way of sparing the boy's soul and of preventing his own otherwise slow, painful death. Although Snape was reluctant, even asking about the impact of such an action on his own soul, Dumbledore implied that this kind of coup de grace would not damage a human soul in the same way that murder would. Furthermore, once Snape had done the deed, he would gain Voldemort's complete trust and learn more of his plans. Snape agreed to do as the headmaster requested. Shortly after that, Snape was visited by Bellatrix Lestrange and Narcissa Malfoy at his home in Spinner's End. Narcissa's son Draco had been given a difficult task by Voldemort, and Narcissa swore Snape to an unbreakable vow on pain of death should he break it, that he would protect Draco, help him complete Voldemort's task, and finish the task himself if Draco failed. When questioned by Bellatrix about his loyalties, Snape claimed to have been working for Voldemort rather than Dumbledore ever since Voldemort's return, and explained his actions in the previous years in that light. In addition, he pointed out that Dumbledore's protection had kept him out of Azkaban and free to operate on Voldemort's behalf. At the start of term feast at Hogwarts, Dumbledore announced he had finally appointed Snape as Professor of Defense Against the Dark Arts, much to Harry's shock and displeasure. Snape was no less severe in teaching defense than he had been with potions. Having finally acquired the position he desired for so long, Snape taught the lessons with a tone of passion for the dark arts as he sought to undo something he did not do for potions. He also became less biased as he allowed Hermione to answer his question, as opposed to three years ago when he insulted her for being an insufferable know-it-all. Horace Slughorn, a retired Hogwarts teacher, replaced Snape as Potions Master. Slughorn loaned Harry an old potions textbook, in which Harry found notes in the margins including helpful tips on how to make potions better, and a variety of curious spells seemingly invented by an unknown student. This book was inscribed, This is the property of the Half-Blood Prince. With the help of the notes, Harry quickly became the best potion maker in the class and Slughorn's favorite student. Snape, however, was suspicious when he heard about Harry's newfound success, maintaining that he never had the impression that he had been able to teach Potter anything at all. In the spring, Snape met with Dumbledore on the outskirts of the Forbidden Forest and wanted to know more about the private lessons between Albus and Harry. Not knowing that they were overheard by Hagrid, Snape burst into resentment that Dumbledore trusts Harry more than him. Dumbledore only ordered Severus to look after Draco even more after Ron Weasley had been poisoned. Albus also invited him for an evening visit in his office. When Snape arrived, arrived and learned that Harry had to die, he showed outrage and ultimately showed that he still, after all these years, loved Lily by revealing his Patronus to be a doe, the same as Lily's. Later, in a fight with Draco, Harry cast one of the prince's spells, marked Four Enemies, Sectum Sempra, and was horrified when it caused devastating wounds to Draco's face and chest. Snape rushed to the scene and healed Draco's wounds, and then interrogated Harry about the source of the spell. When Harry refused to tell him anything, Snape demanded that he bring him all of his books. Harry hid the prince his book and gave Ron Weasley's copy of the book to Snape instead. Snape punished Harry by giving him a detention every Saturday for the rest of the year, including during the final Quidditch match of the season. Under fear of exposing himself as the inventor of the curse that injured Draco, Snape did not outright expose Harry's cheating and potions to Slughorn or the rest of the staff, thus resulting in a punishment much more lenient than usual, which Professor McGonagall saw as something very lucky for Harry. Before leaving with Dumbledore to find a Horcrux, Harry discovered from Professor Sybil Trelawney 
that it had been Severus who overheard the prophecy and told it to Voldemort, thus causing Voldemort to hunt Harry and his parents. Despite this and Harry's angry questions, Dumbledore maintained that he trusted Snape. After returning to Hogwarts with the Slytherin locket, Harry and Dumbledore flew to the school's astronomy tower. Gravely weakened by Voldemort's potion and the school being under attack by Death Eaters, Dumbledore asked Harry to fetch Snape for him. Before Harry could leave, Draco arrived and disarmed Dumbledore, intending to carry out Voldemort's ordered assassination. Draco was unable to bring himself to commit the murder, but Snape killed the headmaster himself. An enraged Harry, who had been immobilized by Dumbledore for his own protection and had witnessed the killing while under his invisibility cloak, chased Snape, Draco, and the Death Eaters as they fled the castle. The two of them engaged in a fierce duel, which became increasingly one-sided. Snape easily blocked Harry's attempts to attack him and jeeringly pointed out Harry's mistakes, but refused to strike back. However, he became enraged when Harry called him a coward and began using his own spells against him, resulting in blasting Harry back against the ground. During the confrontation, Snape also revealed himself to be the Half-Blood Prince, being the son of Tobias Snape, a muggle, and Eileen Prince, a pureblood. Harry was unable to stop Snape before the latter passed through the school gates and disapparated. On the run. After killing Albus Dumbledore and fleeing the school, Snape once more rejoined the ranks of the Death Eaters. In the summer of 1997, Snape informed Lord Voldemort that Harry was to depart from his relative's house four days before his birthday. On Dumbledore's orders, Snape told the Death Eaters the correct date so as to continue Voldemort's trust. Snape then fed Mundungus Fletcher the idea of using seven decoys of Harry Potter during his movement to a place of safety so that when the Death Eaters arrived, they would not know who the real one was. In order to be consistent in his own role, as Death Eater, Snape confunded Fletcher so he would not remember who told him. Because of Severus's information, when the Order of the Phoenix moved Harry from Privet Drive, they were ambushed by Death Eaters, and the Battle of the Seven Potters ensued. During the battle, Snape accidentally sliced off George Weasley's ear with Sectumsempra while aiming at another Death Eater. Shortly after the battle, Severus visited 12 Grimald Place, where in Sirius Black's bedroom, he found Lily Potter's letter. Snape had cut off the letter and took the page, which contained Lily's signature and love. He also cut off the the picture of the Potter family and took the page, which contained Lily for himself. As Headmaster During the 1997-1998 school year, Snape was named Headmaster of Hogwarts, while Death Eaters Electo and Amicus Caro were appointed Deputy Heads. Snape used his position as Headmaster to discreetly protect the students and to contain the Caros. It's later understood that during his time as headmaster, Snape consulted with the portraits of the previous headmasters and continued to receive instructions from Dumbledore's portrait. Before the beginning of the first term, Rufus Scrimgeour removed the Sword of Gryffindor from its glass case in the headmaster's office for examination, along with the other items Dumbledore left in his will. However, this sword was a fake. The real sword had been hidden in a hole in the wall behind Dumbledore's portrait. When the counterfeit had been returned to Dumbledore's office, another attempt to seize the sword was made by Luna Lovegood, Neville Longbottom, and Ginny Weasley. After pretending to punish them by sending them into the Forbidden Forest with Rubus Hagrid, Snape passed the fake sword along to Bellatrix Lestrange, who kept it in her vault at Gringotts, thinking that it was real. Upon being informed by the portrait of Phineas Nigelus Black of Harry Potter's whereabouts, Dumbledore's portrait instructed Snape to give Harry the real sword without the latter knowing it. Not only would Harry not have taken kindly to Snape's appearance after his attack on George Weasley, and also for the murder of Dumbledore, of which Harry was an eyewitness, Witness, it would have been dangerous if Voldemort were to have read his mind and seen Snape helping him. Snape then took the real sword, hid it in a frozen pool of water near Harry's camping spot, and used his Patronus to guide Harry to it. After having rescued Harry from drowning, Ron claimed to have supposedly seen someone watching from the shadows. As headmaster, Snape was thoroughly disliked by many of his students. The old members of Dumbledore's army reformed the organization after Lord Voldemort gained control over the school and started up a revolt against Snape and the Caros. Neville Longbottom, Luna Lovegood, and Ginny Weasley were at the forefront of the rebellion. Snape, following up on his promise to Dumbledore to keep the students safe, subtly undermined the violent, sadistic attempts of the Caros to keep control by doing things such as sending students to help Hagrid as punishments rather than the Caros' more dangerous alternatives. Neville stated that Snape was hardly ever seen whilst headmaster. This could be because Snape remained in the headmaster's office most of the time or was searching for or following the trio to make sure they were safe and or making progress. Also during his tenure, the Educational Decree number 24 was reenacted and students had taken to, most likely under Snape's orders, marching from point A to point B together like they were in military school. Dismissal as headmaster. Harry, Ron, and Hermione returned to Hogwarts Castle in search of the last of Voldemort's Horcruxes, 
which they believed to have something to do with Rowena Ravenclaw. The only idea they could come up with was Ravenclaw's lost diadem, and so Harry and Luna Lovegood went to the Ravenclaw common room to get an idea of what the diadem looked like. Here, they were met by Electo Caro, who pressed her finger to the dark mark and summoned Voldemort. Amicus Caro arrived, but so did Minerva McGonagall. The two began fighting, and while Snape put up a good defense, McGonagall's attack was beginning to overwhelm him, for he was forced to take refuge behind a suit of armor when McGonagall gained the upper hand with daggers. She was soon helped by the arrival of the other heads of house, Sprout, Flitwick, and Slughorn. Outnumbered, Snape fled the castle, jumping out the window of a classroom and using the ability to fly without a broom, which he presumably learned from Voldemort. Battle of Hogwarts and death. Later in the evening, Snape was summoned by Voldemort to the Shrieking Shack. Voldemort explained that he believed that Snape was the master of the Elder Wand from killing Dumbledore, and that Snape must die so the Elder Wand can be his. Snape tried to explain the situation, but Voldemort ordered Nagini to kill Snape by biting into his neck, injecting him with her extremely poisonous venom before he could finish speaking. Before dying, Snape released a cloud of memories and told Harry, who had watched the entire scene from a hidden spot, to take them. Harry later took the memories to the pensive in Dumbledore's office. From these memories, Harry learned everything about Snape's past. In the first scene, Harry discovered that Snape had befriended Lily as a nine-year-old when they lived near each other in the industrial town of Cokeworth. Upon their arrival at Hogwarts, the Sorting Hat placed Snape and Lily into Slytherin and Gryffindor houses respectively. They remained close friends for the next few years until they were driven apart by Snape's interest in the dark arts and by Lily's interest in James Potter. The friendship finally ended following the incident that Harry had briefly witnessed in his fifth year, in which Snape accidentally insulted Lily. Despite this separation and Snape's enmity towards Lily's eventual husband, James, Snape continued to love Lily on a much deeper and stronger romantic level for the rest of his life. Snape was seen going to Dumbledore and desperately begging him to hide the Potters from Lord Voldemort, who was planning on targeting Lily's son to prevent a prophecy from being fulfilled. Snape had been the one who had previously revealed said prophecy to Voldemort, not knowing at first that it was referring to Lily and her family. Though he asked Voldemort to spare Lily, Snape still feared for her safety as he knew that Voldemort could not be relied upon to grant this small favor. Snape became a double agent for the Order of the Phoenix so that Dumbledore could ensure Lily's protection, employing occlumency to hide his duplicity from his master. Snape felt devastating pain and remorse when Lily was found and murdered. From that point on, he agreed to help Dumbledore protect her son and fight against Lord Voldemort. Snape demanded, however, that his feelings about Lily be kept a secret. Dumbledore complied and never told anyone the real reason why Snape switched sides. Snape's memories then revealed that Severus slowed the spread of the curse afflicted upon Dumbledore after the latter put on Marvel Ogaunt's ring. However, the curse would have ultimately killed Albus within a year. Dumbledore, knowing that Draco Malfoy was ordered by Voldemort to kill him and expecting the boy would fail, asked Snape to kill him himself instead of Draco in order to gain Voldemort's complete trust and learn more of his plans. At the end, Snape's memories showed Snape's outrage after learning that Harry had to die. Snape ultimately revealed his Patronus, a doe, the same as Lily's, showing that he still, after all these years, loved her. Because of the memories, Harry finally understood where Snape's true allegiances always were. The memories provided Harry with the information he needed to ensure Voldemort's final defeat. He also showed Harry the memory where Albus Dumbledore had told him about Harry himself being a Horcrux, although he did not understand it because Dumbledore had asked him to pass that along to Harry when the time was right. Postmortem. During the final duel between Harry and Voldemort, Harry finally told him that Snape had been, in fact, Dumbledore's man. Harry also revealed that Snape was never the true master of the Elder Wand because Snape never defeated Dumbledore. The two had arranged his death and he would have died either way. Before Snape killed Dumbledore, Draco Malfoy disarmed Dumbledore. Therefore, Draco was the true master of the Elder Wand, not Snape. However, Harry had overpowered Draco at Malfoy Manor and taken his wand. Because of the subtleties governing wand ownership discussed by Garrick Ollivander, Harry was the current master of the Elder Wand. Snape's true loyalties remained hidden due to his skills as an Occlumens and the fact that his actions were motivated by love, which completely eluded Voldemort. Successfully defeating both Voldemort and Nagini, Harry and Neville avenged Snape's death. Snape's portrait was not automatically put into the headmaster's office since he had essentially abandoned his post during the Battle of Hogwarts. However, Harry, in one of his acts of showing reconciliation towards Snape, made sure that his portrait was placed there. It is possible that Harry gave his corpse a proper burial after the war ended. Rita Skeeter also published a book about Snape's life, entitled Snape, Scoundrel or Saint, sometime after his death. If it's consistent with Skeeter's other works, it's probably riddled with inaccuracies designed to tarnish Snape's reputation. Albus Severus Potter, the second son of Harry, and the only one of Harry's children to have inherited Lily's bright green almond-shaped eyes, was named after Snape. 
When Albus was worried that he might be sorted into Slytherin, Harry responded that Albus was named after two headmasters, one of whom was a Slytherin and probably the bravest man I ever knew. During the calamity of the late 2010s and early 2020s, Harry met with a calamity investigator working for the Statue of Secrecy Task Force at the Leaky Cauldron, and taught them Snape's method of preparing sophophorus beans by pressing them with the flat side of a knife to release more of their juice, which they used to reduce the brew time of their dawdle draft. Alternate Timeline By his fourth year at Hogwarts, Scorpius Malfoy had learned all about Snape's history and motivations, allowing him to convince an alternate version of Snape in a timeline where Voldemort won the Battle of Hogwarts and thus ruled Wizarding Britain that he came from a different timeline, so that Snape could help Scorpius meet the local resistance and undo what he had unwittingly done to the past. This version of Snape correctly guessed that if he died in the struggle against Voldemort in Scorpius' timeline, on account that the boy was evidently surprised to see him alive in the alternate universe, Universe, but proceeded to aid him nonetheless. If anything, Severus merely expressed annoyance that he apparently met his end at the Dark Lord's hands in the original timeline. After knocking down Dolores Umbridge to allow Scorpius Malfoy to escape, he was attacked by the Dementors, leaving his fate unknown. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.